As the world emerged from the brutal onslaught of World War II, it began its steep descent into the dreadful pits of the Cold War. Across each side of the Iron Curtain, military factions raced to produce the ultimate strategic bomber, a massive long-range aircraft capable of piercing all enemy defenses to deliver immense amounts of unspeakable nuclear devastation right into the hearts of their opponents' largest cities and population centers. With the Convair B-58 Hustler becoming the first operational Mach 2-capable strategic bomber, the U.S. appeared to have won the upper hand. Nevertheless, the Soviets were devising their unique response, an aircraft so massive and fast that it could eradicate New York City before being detected. With a ghastly flying wing configuration and powered by six turbojet VK-15M engines, the DBS-LK Dark Star strategic bomber was designed to pierce into the United States at speeds above Mach 2.8, outclassing every American interceptor in active service. The Dark Star's ominous design seemed to come straight out of a sci-fi movie. It also presented the United States and its allies with a very real threat, that of nuclear annihilation. Interceptors. During the 1950s and 60s, the military aviation industry was focused on producing faster aircraft. Most air defense systems were based on radar detection, followed by the launch of interceptor aircraft, capable of catching the enemies and taking them out of the sky before they could deal any damage. Emerging strategic bomber designs sought to eliminate the enemy's capacity to defend itself by being so fast that by the time the radars detected it and sent an interceptor, the aircraft would already be gone. As the Soviet Union and the US did everything in their power to manufacture the fastest supersonic bombers, they had to simultaneously build increasingly faster interceptors that could catch the enemy's supersonic strategic bombers in case of an attack. Speed was the name of the game. It was both the mechanism through which bombers were meant to surpass enemy defenses and also the means to defend a nation against that very threat. Developed during the 1950s for the United States Air Force, the futuristic Convair B-58 Hustler seemed to achieve a decisive victory. The aircraft was the first operational nuclear-capable bomber to reach speeds above Mach 2, giving it the ability to outrun the fastest Soviet interceptor at the time, the MiG-21. But just as the Hustler performed its maiden flight in 1960, the Soviets had begun early research on an utterly earth-shattering project, a massive strategic bomber that would be able to reach speeds surpassing Mach 4. Such a feat of engineering would immediately give the Soviet Union total supremacy in the skies. The Dark Star In 1957, the Leningrad Red Banner Air Force Engineering Academy began designing what they envisioned as the strategic bomber of the future. The orders came directly from the Air Force General Staff, and the program was led by renowned aeronautical engineer Alexander Sergeyevich Moskalyov. The project was named Dalny Strategiski Bombardirovstrik Krilo, or DSBLK, which translates to Long Range Strategic Bomber Flying Wing. The engineering team theorized a series of aeronautical configurations that would allow a massive strategic bomber to deliver over 40 tons of nuclear payloads at speeds ranging from Mach 2 to 4. Flight models projected that a propulsion system powered by 6, 8, or 10 turbojet engines could provide flying speeds of up to Mach 2 to 3.8. Even so, Moskalyov considered the possibility of using a mixed configuration of ramjet engines that could theoretically push the strategic bomber at speeds over Mach 4. With additional experimentation, speeds of up to Mach 5 could be attained, and Moskalyov did not rule out the possibility of designing the first hypersonic strategic bomber on Earth. The layout was ages ahead of its time, and the early design occurred in parallel to the American Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, which would eventually achieve Mach 3 speeds. 
To meet such ambitious expectations, the team led by Moskaliov developed several specific layout diagrams for the aircraft's fuselage, ranging from conventional, tailless, flying wing, and duck wing configurations, as well as swept, sickle-shaped wings and triangular, rectangular, and trapezoidal wing designs. Each proposal was more futuristic and unique than the last. In the end, they decided to go with a flying wing configuration, in which most of the fuselage would be part of the wing structure, reducing drag significantly and further increasing the speed projections of the aircraft. The airframe design was as long as a football field from nose to tail, and with a 121-foot wingspan that would have made it the largest flying wing on Earth and the most massive bomber to take to the skies. Altitude and Range The ultimate strategic bomber would not only need to be uniquely fast, but it would also need to be able to reach every corner of the world from its bases in the Soviet Union. To achieve the maximum speed and range possible, the Dark Star was devised to fly at incredibly high altitudes of up to 100,000 feet, with much lower air resistance. Soaring at such formidable heights, Moskaliov projected that the DSBLK would be able to reach targets at 10,000 miles, putting the entire world within its range from different bases across the nation. For it to work, it had to be constructed of uniquely durable and light material. As such, titanium was chosen as the primary material for the aircraft, instead of the conventional D-23 alloy used in many Soviet airframes at the time. The uncommon material, often used for spacecraft designs, was hard to find for most nations during the 1950s. Still, the USSR had the most extensive available stockpiles, which would have made the manufacturing process possible, even in large numbers. Even when technically heavier than aluminum, only a fraction of titanium is needed to achieve the same strength that aluminum can provide, making it the ideal material designed to cruise 10,000 miles in a single flight. With the fuselage design, speed, range, and altitude accounted for, Moskaliov then moved to the weapons capabilities of the formidable strategic bomber. Airborne Arsenal The Dark Star was designed to have a vast offensive and defensive arsenal at its disposal. To diminish the United States' ability to wage war, the bomber could hold a 20-ton payload inside its bomb bay. Considering that the largest flying wing in the world, the B-2 Spirit, has a maximum 18-ton payload capacity, the Dark Star's 20-ton bomb bay was a remarkable design feat. Additionally, the Dark Star was equipped with several hardpoints under the wing structure, which allowed it to carry up to 20 additional tons of warheads. With such an impressive capacity, the Dark Star could hypothetically carry nuclear warheads as massive as the Sar Bomber, the most powerful thermonuclear weapon ever developed and tested. Considering it could reach Mach 5 and carry thermonuclear warheads of up to 20 tons, the Dark Star could have turned the entirety of New York City into dust without ever being detected by U.S. defensive systems. As improbable as intercepting a Mach 5 bomber was in the 1960s, even if a U.S. fighter managed to engage the Soviet strategic bomber, it was in for a fight. The Dark Star was to be equipped with four remote-controlled turrets that could fire over 7,000 to 9,000 rounds per minute in every direction. The bomber design could also carry four to five guided air-to-air -air projectiles to engage approaching enemy aircraft from a considerably safe distance. To further avoid detection, the bomber was to be fitted with a series of jamming stations for enemy radar systems. Combined with its remarkable speeds, it would render enemy radar operators ineffective at identifying and tracking the Soviet aircraft. In addition to strike operations, the DSBLK was equipped with radio and photographic reconnaissance systems to conduct high-altitude surveillance behind enemy territory. Ultimately, the Dark Star was meant to be an extremely survivable aircraft with enough firepower to eradicate entire cities. Fate Despite its potential to become the fastest and most powerful strategic bomber on Earth, 
the Dark Star never went beyond the early design phase. Many historians argue that the USSR did not have the capabilities to build such a wonder weapon, assuring that the project was more of a theoretical layout than a feasible design. The Soviet Union's military was indeed facing severe challenges at the start of the 1960s. However, the demise of the Dark Star project can also be explained by outside influence. The recent strides in intercontinental ballistic missile technology rendered many of the supersonic and hypersonic bomber projects useless on both sides of the Iron Curtain, as the missiles could do the same job at a fraction of the cost. In addition, the development of supersonic surface-to-air missile systems also made the use of supersonic bombers highly risky, and aircraft engineers were soon looking for stealth instead of speed as a way to circumvent the defenses a strategic bomber might face. The Dark Star was way ahead of its time, but also a decade too late to have had a chance at being built. If all conditions had been met, perhaps the Soviets would have reigned supreme in the strategic bomber race. Thank you for watching our video. Don't hesitate to click on your screen and check out another of our Dark Documentaries channels, where we delve into the most fascinating battles of modern history and the most powerful weapons in the world. We publish new content regularly, so stay tuned.